you seem to prefer film over digital. Yeah, uh, it's just, I mean, the other thing about film is it's so expensive. Yeah. Um, and it now, it's, I mean, it's, for black and white, I really like um, Delta 3200 Ilford film, and that's really hard to find. Right. Um, so, and like the, some of the Pan F films and stuff like that are really great too. They're like 50 ASA, and they're, co or like the copy film, you know what mm -hmm. I'm talking about? It used, to, it used to be used for um, like newspapers and stuff like that. You used to yeah. use it to, to literally take a picture of text, right. and then that would be what they ran right. um, to print with. So a lot of that stuff is great too. Mm -hmm. um, I, you, you, if you look through a lot of the photographs that, for instance, you have up on your site, a lot of them um, have a few things in common. One of which is, is that your focus is slightly off-center. I'm just wondering, some of these things I'm wondering if you do like sort of on purpose or you just, they just kind of turn out like Where that. Where nothing's in the middle of the frame. Exactly. Yeah, and, and like your main, that. your main yeah. subject is off. Kind of, if you get, it's nice, if you get a wide lens, it's nice to um, line somebody up right in the center. Um, and if it's wide enough, then you've got, you know, you've got something that's sort of um, a symmetrical image where they're right in the middle and you've got stuff to look at on both sides. But the one, you know, the theory behind kind of getting somebody in focus and then shifting slightly so they're to the left or the right of the frame, it's like you've got so much to, you, get, you can see what's behind them. Right. Um, or what else is in the room, which is cool. Right. Um, but uh, like if you, if you look at, but the, the one thing I noticed, um, and I started doing this recently, is using a, like a wider lens and, and centering everything up so it's, it's right in the center. The Royal Tenenbaums, if you look at the way that's shot, everything is shot that way. Um, uh, everything is, is perfectly, you know, the, like the, a lot of the, the, the shots, is whatever you shoot, you're looking at the people in the shot are perfectly dead on, and then there's a ton of stuff on both sides. Right. Um, and that sounds like, God, I gotta rip that off. Right. Uh, so, but I, I don't know, it's just something that I guess I started doing a long time ago. And then you also utilize um, blurriness. Now, I, I'm, I'm tr been trying to figure, I mean, I literally started shooting in September of last year, mm -hmm. um, thanks to a photo pass for Monolith. Um, but it's something I've always wanted to kind of pick up. And I'm, I, I can't quite decide um, regarding like the blurriness factor. You mean like shutter drag? Um, it's been like sort of, um, you know, like... Oh, that's just really shallow depth of field stuff. Right. Yeah, so you use a longer lens. Like this, I think I used a, Here, like a one, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you use a longer lens and then you, you kind of make sure it's like wide open. So this was probably like, I took this with a Hasselblad, it was probably like an 80 or maybe a 120. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it's available light, it's in Griffith Park in LA opened it up all the way to like f4 mm -hmm. um, you know and with wider it's harder to do that with a wide lens right. um, because t even at like 2 2 8 every f2 8 everything's gonna be f2 even everything's gonna be in focus um, because the obviously both sides of the lens are so close together but when you start using longer lens longer like a longer lens like a 120 or um, or even an 85 or 35 millimeter mm -hmm. um, you can pull stuff in and out of focus and leave everything else you know, it's just shallow depth of field stuff. Right, right. Um, so, um, let me see. The other thing, too, is that um, I that I liked was some of the... Um, this is actually a shot with a wider lens. Um, this is a Hasselblad, too. Um, but I used a, a close-up ring on it. So, you know, it's like a ring that goes between the lens and the camera. It's like mm -hmm. an adapter type of thing, mm -hmm. um, which allows you, because it, it moves moves the lens away from the from the your film plane um, so you can get you can focus really close up you can you know put the camera up you know, right next to an image and be able to focus really closely on it mm -hmm. um, and then it just throws everything else out behind it out, mm -hmm. of, out of focus who was that anyway this is uh, Steve Barone from uh, who I played in Lifter Polar a good friend of mine ours um, from Minneapolis gotcha yeah. And then the other thing that I noticed um, that I really liked that you do um, is that you sort of utilize, how do you feel about utilizing, you know, um, shadow and black and white to this extent? Like, some people would look at this and, some people would look at this <laughs> and they'd say that, that that's not, you know, a great photo just because of the fact that, you know, it's not, you can't really see a lot. Um, I guess, 
you know, one thing I'm kind of curious about is where's the fine line? Is it is it difficult to find that fine line between what you think is art and what is a good photograph to right. every? Well, I, I mean, this is the thing about um, we get asked this a lot with the band too. I think if you if you think it's a good image, then it is a good image. You know, if you're into it, I think that that's that's the best way to develop style, which nobody has, or I think lacks a lot today, is because people are so worried about what everybody else is going to think of, of their work or what they do. Um, the internet is part of that problem, mm -hmm. uh, which is a whole different conversation. But, I mean, if you're into it, you know, I, I think do what you like. And, you know, I think if that, that way, too, I mean, who gives a shit what everybody else thinks anyways? Um, if you do what you, what you enjoy doing, um, then you're always going to be able to, to kind of be happy with what you do and happy with your work. Whereas if you're, you're trying to go for what everybody else thinks is good and you're maybe not crazy about it, you're going to be miserable. Right. So there's some old expression, some, my mom was telling me this, I think it's like, um, you know, do what you enjoy and, and or do what pleases you and people will enjoy it, do what pleases everybody else and a few will like it. So. Right, right. Well, that's good, good to know. Yeah. And then um, uh, what advice would you give to a new photographer? Uh, Besides the one, the great stuff you just said. Right. I, I mean, I don't, like I said, yeah. I mean, that that would be a big thing. That and um, learn how everything works, um, because I think once you know some of the more technical um, aspects of photography, um, and you can get those figured out, and and then it allows you to really focus on aesthetic and and style and. Um, how you compose your photos um, so I think if you learn that stuff it, it kind of can stick in the back of your mind and it, it can influence your decision making a lot while you're concentrating on other things because you just you know that you know that it's true you know that this exists and that this is what's going to happen if you do if you move this light here if you move closer this way stuff like that um, so I think if, if, if that stuff you can get um, a handle on um, then it's something that will always be with you and then you can kind of explore sort of what you like um, or, or you know what, what you'd like to try to accomplish I guess. Okay. And then um, last question um, I'm curious about um, you'd said that having been um, as a photographer and someone that's getting their picture taken a lot more now um, because of being in the whole study um, do you find that like you... This thing's driving me crazy. What? <laughs> because I know it's on and it's just like I'm, it's going to catch me picking my nose. Yeah. Like <laughs> well, I'll edit that part. Right. Out. The beauty of retouch. Yes, you know? excellent. Um, but, so, are you involved at all when it comes to um, some of the photo shoots? And, to follow it, the next part of that is, that is it difficult when you are um, uh, having your picture done to not, like, try to jump in and do stuff? Yeah, you know yeah. I, mean? I drive a lot of photographers crazy on shoots. Especially, I mean, it. I hate for it to sound like this, but, like, some of the younger photographers that have shot us, like, I'll see them moving lights around, and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, that's never going to work. Like, that's going to look terrible. Right. You know, where they're shooting, like, underneath you, and I'm like, that's not a good angle on anybody. Right. Um, but, you know, I try to just be like, you know what, this is going to go up on the internet for six months, and then nobody's going to look at it again. Right. So, who cares? Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I try to just, you have to sort of, relinquish control and let, let people do their thing because you know at the same time shit I don't know everything and I might see somebody doing something that I think is totally ridiculous and not going to work and then I'll see the image I'll be like shit I wish I would have thought of that you know 